Hi guys. One of the first things I bought when I got into astronomy was one of these. It's a uh, planisphere and basically you turn it round to match the date and time and it shows you the stars that you can see in the sky. Works quite well. Not easy to see at night so you need a torch as well. Um, and uh, yeah, a little bit basic and a little bit, you can't zoom in or anything like that. It's, it's a couple of bits of card. So these days, of course, everybody's got a uh, an iPad or a, a phone, um, whatever it is, Android or, or iPhone. So today I'd like to talk to you about Sky Safari 5. Okay, so here's the website for Sky Safari Astronomy. Um, you can see it shown on an iPad. Uh, it comes for iOS and Android as well. And you can also run it on a Mac. Three versions. I've gone for the middle one, Sky Safari Plus, uh, for two reasons. The, um, the stars database is not bad at 2.6 million stars, um, but it also has this uh, state-of-the-art mobile telescope control, as it says, and that works with the SkyFi, which I'll show in the next video. Okay, so when we open up Sky Safari, we see some uh, default um, configurations and uh, the Sun is up but we can still see all the stars so that seems a little bit strange um, so what I prefer to do is to go in this where it shows show daylight skylight just to make it easier for this I'm going to change the, uh, the time so I click on the 12 with my finger on the iPad and then advance through the day so that we get into a, a dark sky and immediately what we see is a nice conjunction of Moon, Mars and Venus looks good, wish it was clear tonight to have a look at that ok I can click the time again to get rid of it if I click on a uh, an object um, then it highlights also at the top and I can then click on info down in the bottom left and it will give me all sorts of information First of all, on the um, left-hand side, it shows me uh, all the statistical information, rise time, transit time, etc. And then on the right-hand side, lots of additional information. And this varies, of course, with each object that you look at. Um, but in terms of the planets, there's a wealth of detail really available. Let's have a quick look at the settings again. So you notice I went there to horizon and sky. Um, down the bottom here we have different panoramas we can use and at the moment it's set on Chester Park but it could be for instance Desert Road. Um, so then you see that the the ground has changed completely. You also have the option to use your own. So I've created a 360 degree panorama from the point where I normally put my telescope in the back garden and so straight away what you can see is I'm going to struggle to see the conjunction of the Moon, Mars and Venus from my house um, but then it does show me just about everything I can see which is, which is a great help quite honestly uh, for setting up um, viewing lists and so on so if we look at the menu bar down at the bottom here, um, we see that the, the first one is the search tab and opens up a uh, very comprehensive and even advanced search function, uh, including all the history of objects that you've already searched for, tonight's best, just looks at the sun and planets, moons, etc. So you can find just about anything you need. So for instance, Eta Cassiopeia. Clicking on it shows me plenty of information and then clicking on center will immediately turn the uh, um, direction to show me exactly where it is and then I can zoom in. Whilst we're here you can see that there are, so for instance, the uh, um, deep sky objects such as this one, the Pac-Man Nebula and uh, various other um, things so for instance open clusters are shown by this um, dotted circle and if I could find a planetary 
yeah there we go you'll see that the little dumbbell is shown by this um, circle with the arrows outside so clicking on any one of those exactly the same thing gives you plenty more detail um, and then whilst we're there we could also for instance add to observing list so I've got various observing lists here and I've created one already for February 2017 so immediately that's added for me to go back now what I can do is when I go to search again down the bottom I get down to my um, uh, favorites and February is already in there and sure enough the limp little dumbbell nebula is shown at the bottom Messier 76 information we've covered center so center in basically allows you to press that button and uh, it brings whatever object you've got selected directly to the middle uh, time we've covered um, scope control I will cover in the next video orbit yeah not sure about this bit of a gimmicky feature if you ask me it doesn't really show you a great deal um, it does show you some sort of view of the Milky Way around and where we are in relative terms okay so whilst we've still got the time tab open what you can see is if I click on either the minutes or seconds or um, or even the date just below that that it will change by one day for each increment or I could use the uh, the, f the f fast movement just run through so as you see it runs pretty fast so night mode is exactly that it makes everything go red uh, and then okay we've got first of all I'll move to this one tonight at a glance which basically shows us rise and set times of each of the solar system objects um, and it also includes things like uh, ISS and other and then next to it we have this sky and telescope uh, interface so what you can see here is uh, it talks about the different dates throughout the next week and what's going to go on uh, and if I click on the view tab and then zoom out a bit then you can see yeah what we get is um, a description of what's going on for each one of those let's have a little look at the settings in a bit more detail um, but a couple I would like to come down to are things like the constellations so you can see that the constellations are shown as lines they could be traditional or modern lines uh, but you can also show them as uh, mythical figure figures and even indeed as boundaries and then we can also show their names so what have I just done well okay so now what you can see is the sky compartmentalized into each of the um, 88 constellations if I click on one without selecting the star then you can see it's highlighted it now and the same thing if I go there then I get lots of information about the constellation directly including the major stars in included um, I could also point out that there's a little um, help icon down in the bottom right and clicking on that takes you to a context sensitive help uh, which is pretty good actually I have to say if you get lost on anything the help tells you pretty much everything you need to know about it but the important bit I want to move on to is this um, it's about the telescope and what it allows you to do you can see under the equipment it says tap to configure so if I click on that what it allows you do, to do is to set in your existing equipment so for instance I've got a 10 inch Newtonian and a 5 inch Mac and uh, yeah I can basically just set that up I can call it what I like as a name uh, put in the aperture and focal length for both of them I can then move down and include the eyepieces that I've got um, exactly the same so for instance on the axiom put in your apparent field of view etc you can put in binoculars 10 by 50s I've got a uh, two finders on the different scopes uh, I've got a camera and which is great so now what I can do is I can go into display and I can show in there some things like a 9 by 50 uh, finder scope I can show the Newtonian with the 15 mil um, but what I do need to do is this item down here is show even if not connected to a telescope I can also put some labels on which will help me identify them and now if I open it up what you see 
is the is the patch of sky that I will see through uh, first of all the 9 by 50 finder and then also the 15mm um, axiom connected to the big scope so if we go over to um, M42 for instance what you can see is that if I was looking through the 10 inch Newtonian at M42 I'd miss out on M43 a little bit because it wouldn't quite all fit in but that's a really nice feature and you can change it to show all sorts of other things as well so for instance if I uh, if I choose that I can choose any of the um, the other eyepieces or I can indeed choose the camera so I can see what field of view I will get through the uh, the Nikon perhaps I would like to try and rearrange it slightly well we can do that as well we've got field rotation so I could I can do this move it round a little bit and then I can see what I can actually if I can get M43 in there as well okay plenty more I could show you but that's about it for now thank you for watching